Once upon a time, wandering minstrels and ballad singers would journey through their counties, pay their way by singing songs about people they'd met or places they'd seen and events that had actually happened. Over the years, I've seen traditional ways of life in the West being buffeted and broken by the winds of change. I think it's time the wandering minstrel returned home. For ten years I've travelled the world singing songs about the people in the landscape of the southwest. I've come back home to wander through the heart of the West Country and to ask friends and strangers about what brought them here, what keeps them here and what they love or loathe about the place. And somehow I have to turn this journey into a song that I will be playing here in ten days time. So wish me luck. Uh, I think I'll need it. My journey is going to take me from the mouth of the River X to the North Cornish coast, crossing through the open spaces of Dartmoor on the way. And it's a journey that I hope will find plenty to inspire a modern balladeer. But first, I'm off to sea, following the same tides as the vast fishing fleets of the past. Their day is long gone, and the modern fisherman has to adapt in order to survive. My mate David Curley still fishes in the waters off Exmouth. In the past he's dived for scallops, but even when he uses more conventional methods, his catch bears little resemblance to the West Country's traditional harvest of the sea. What's actually happened today? What have you caught here? What have you dredged uh, up? We've been fishing for cuttlefish basically today yeah. because that's, the area we're fishing on is, is pretty flat here and the cuttle have moved in this, this time of year and that's basically all, there's a good export market for cuttlefish and that's what So that goes overseas, that's not something that we eat? They're, well again, people are using cuttlefish now. Yeah, you were saying something earlier on that with a lot of people moving down to the west country from the southeast, it's, it, maybe it's changing the sort of the food that we like to eat and this is reflected by the things you catch or? Oh, definitely. Um, there's markets now, whereas red mullet and fresh squid and everything used to go overseas, possibly for an overseas market. People are really clued in, basically from London restaurants and from top restaurants down here. And um, everything from the sea is becoming edible. You've been actually all over the world now, you know, I know that you, you're involved in yachts as well, yes, skippering yachts. Yes. Anything to do with the water, I would just love to see. Is there something about this area that draws you back to it? I suppose if you're, if you're born in Wales, you love the Welsh people. I'm born in the West Country yeah. and I love the West Country, but it is becoming popular from people from London and that because it's a, it has a fantastic base of good, solid people, honest people who just like to do their work and just earn a bit of money to survive at the end of the day and, and they're just really sound solid people. And for those people that come here to live, can they become West Country people? Do they, does it change them living down here at all? Oh sure they can if they, you know, if they have a, stay here for at least three generations. Yeah. <laughs> there was a time when Dave's joke about having to live here that long would have struck a harsh chord with newcomers, but I think those times have changed. That night on shore in Exmouth, I found living proof of this change. Once a month, the Bicton Inn resounds with music reflecting the musical roots of the West. The Joyce Gang and their friends draw on a wide range of English and Celtic influences for their compositions, and Dubliner John Redmond is a key contributor. John came here over 20 years ago and felt at home from the moment his feet first touched the Devon land. He's brought more than a little touch of Ireland with him. John, you're a Dubliner. I am, yes. How long have you been here? I've been here for 20 years. And what's kept you? What's kept me here is the beer and the women and the crack. <laughs> I think um, Devon is benefiting from a lot of people coming in because yeah. Yeah. initially, 
they're very friendly people. And that, that certainly hasn't changed. The friendliness is still there. And you, you've, got a, you've got a warmth. As soon as you come into a, into a pub or, any, or into a session or anything like that down here, you've got an instant friendliness. Are your kids now, are they Devonians or are they young Irish men and women or what? Oh no. What are you turning out? I'm turning out Devonians. Really? For sure, but right. of course, yeah. I mean, God, they, um, they've been born and brought up here in Devon. And I think it's, uh, from my point of view, certainly from my point of view, it's, it's uh, a wonderful place to be brought up in. It's great. It's got everything, hasn't it? You know, it's got great weather, it's got great music, and it's got great people. So, you can't be there, can you? I've moved inland and north to the edge of Dartmoor and in quiet, isolated corners of the moor like this, it's possible to imagine an age when the lanes would ring with the songs of farm workers. I wondered if anyone was keeping these traditions alive. There's rain in streams and dark as pitch when us trotted on that night. And when us come by Merivale Bridge, the old mare took a fright. Says I to Bill, be careful, you'll have us in the drains. Says Bill to me, good dummy, said he. Why haven't you got the reins? Just then the old mare come up against a whapping girl, big stone. Her kicked the trap to flip it, and her trotted off alone. And when us come to reckoning, turn no use sitting there. And us had to trip some 13 miles from Tavistock Goosey Fair. And it's all and where be you going? And what be you doing up there? Hey, turn your prong and stamp along to Tavistock Goosey Fair. Well sung. But these are harder times, and like all farmers, Carl Alafelt has had to adapt and diversify. However, he's a born survivor and a dedicated farmer, and also a pretty fine fiddler. Carl, that's a rare old West Country name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad, he's Swedish. Um, I was born and brought up in the West Country. I was born in Taunton, yeah. and uh, lived most of my life here. I moved here when I was six, so, mm. so I'm Scando Devon. But you wouldn't want to be doing what you do anywhere else in, in England? No, I wouldn't. I mean, this time of year, yeah. it, you would, don't want to be anywhere else in the world, really. Mm. I mean, um, there are times in the, in the early spring, you know, when the ewes aren't looking quite so well, the weather's absolutely awful, and mm -hmm. the feed's running out, when you think, what the hell am I doing this for? But, but they pass, and then you get into this time of year, and it's exactly what you want to do. impression with all the things you're involved in that, that music is, is central to that really it is for me it's a, a release that you don't get yeah. from any it's an it's an acceptance it's somebody saying that they appreciate what you're doing mm. which you don't necessarily get from farming and also it's a chance to get off the farm as much as anything else sometimes you're here for, for weeks on end and you don't get off the place and has it also been part of the process that's made you accepted in this part very much so yeah yeah, yeah. I'm sure it has. Uh, that and the farming, the music and the farming together mm -hmm. have really helped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Carl, the Joyce Gang and Dave Curley have given me plenty of food for thought. Now I need to take a break and make some music of my own.
After two days of fine weather, the wind changed and the rain came. So I took the chance to take stock and to maybe come up with some musical ideas of my own. I've always had a fund of chords and little tunes and phrases that sort of lie waiting for a subject matter because for me a song needs a story and uh, this particular journey the story is hopefully coming out of the people we meet and the places that we've been so it's a slightly different process to the normal one of writing a song but the two sequences I thought would work is um, using the tuned guitar as a drone is changing the chords on top of it whatever the rhythm will be change would be good actually. And the wind change. And the wind change. And the wind change. For all of us. Couldn't be a bugger to sing though, that high bit. For all In a way, the guys, the John, the, the chap from Dublin, you know, that, that Celtic drive would be a very good feel, I think. With something a bit more tender on top of the... I like that phrase. It's almost um, worthy of a ballad, isn't it? Oh well, bit of work to do. I'd heard about a band up on the north coast called Sacred Turf, and they combine a roots acoustic feel with a good indie rock attitude. So take time to live. I decided to play them what I'd written so far and see if I could draw on their indie rock attitude and also see how it sounded with some fiddling. What I'm supposed to be doing on this journey is, is coming up with a song, you know, speaking to musicians and people that live here and have uh, settled here and um, trying to contain in the song the atmosphere of, of the West Country. Writing songs, I mean, are there themes and subject matters to do with living around here that, that you sort of draw oh, yeah. on? Basically I write, you know, semi-structure really yeah. and, and then when I take it to the band they put all the magic on top I mean normally I get a rough idea of yeah. my idea but fortunately I've got a band which completely blow away my idea and make it about a million times better <laughs> anyway like you know so it's cool what would you do if, they, if you thought they made it worse um, I'd tell them <laughs> I would tell them would yeah, <laughs> really? you? I'm sure because I'm sure they tell me as well, as well like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd use the classic 3-4 rhythm a chord sequence where I'm playing um, uh, a D and a G, sorry, a D and an A over the top of the of the G. So it's like G, D, A, G. I just play it over. If you give me like a riffy thing, see? something rhythmic on the, the bottom of the string. That's it. It's almost Cajun, isn't it? Okay, so that 
last of the verse almost, and then the chorus. I'm singing, and the wind changes. So I just, I just play it over and over, all right, and just yeah. chuck one in when you've got one. One, two, three. At last I had the basic structure of the song worked out, but I wanted to polish up the chorus. So I took a detour to a converted chapel near Holsworthy, where my friend Jared O'Farrell lives. He's benefited from Windsor Change, working from home and distributing music via the internet, and I wanted to get his opinion on the themes of this song. One of the images that I really like, because I don't know if you used to get this when you were a kid, you used to make a face at your parents and they say, you'll stay like that if the wind changes. <laughs> Did you ever used to get that? Yeah, it happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was a really nice idea for a song. Yeah. That what if the wind changed at any particular point and things hadn't moved on and the, and the fields were still virtually being slaved, you know, people were in the mind as a way of really. life. Yeah. Uh, maybe you get that in the verse and in the chorus that can, you know... The wind has changed for all of us. I think so. I think maybe, maybe the change has already happened. And, and something like this will crystallise that for a lot of people as well. Maybe for a lot of people, that, you know, they're now waking up and they're seeing a different world. And that's what's maybe brought them here. Yeah. So, I mean, rather than... It was going to be, um... When the wind changes For all the world um, It could be... When the wind changed, it changed for all of us. Back to Cornwall and halfway through my journey. Port Isaac is still a working village and must be one of the most beautiful in the West. I don't know how long there's been a pottery in Port Isaac, but hands have worked clay for centuries in Cornwall, and my friend Bill Hawkins is continuing this tradition. I'm working on this song, it's dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm working on this song throughout this journey, and the idea I've got is that all the change that's been happening down here is not just affected one group of people. Like the farmers seem to think it's just them, and the fishermen seem to think it's just them. Yeah. But it's everybody, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, things change, and that there's very little you can do about it. Um, it's almost like you have to ride it. Yeah. Yeah. It j just, you know, we've all got to sort of make our own ways, really. One of the ideas I've got is like each verse will describe a situation whether it's fishing or farming or, yeah. or making or whatever and then the chorus will be but the wind changed but for everybody and it, it, it I think it goes back to something my mum used to say if I made a face at her you'll stay like that if the wind changes yes in the song it yeah. doesn't things don't stay the same they move on yeah and uh, that's, ba that's the basic idea of it yeah so so it's taking aspects of, of 
what the, the way people make their living in the yeah, West Country? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. yeah. And people from inside and outside the county or the, or the, or the West Country yeah. coming here. But, but most importantly, yeah. I think, adding something to it. Yes. Contributing. Yeah. Bill grew up here, and after years away, he returned to open his pottery. I wanted to find out what had brought him home. Say you're miles away overseas and you were trying to give people an impression of what this is like, what would you...? It's, I think it's the, 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 the cosiness of the place. I mean, to me, it's just the greatest place in the world. And, and it's, it's got that wonderful warmth about it. And I think that's partly through, through the fact that you walk up the street and everybody knows you. And everybody will talk to you, everybody says hello. It, it's just a wonderful place. Um, wonderful people, really. South Australia, I was born. Heave away, haul away. South Australia, round Cape Horn, we're bound. Bill is a leading light with sea shanty group Fisherman's Friends. And though this music comes from another age, it sums up the spirit of the West Country and its unbroken links to the sea. Somehow, when you've lived down here, you never get the you never get the sea out of your blood, really. Especially having grown up by the sea, um, it's always there. And wherever I wherever I was when it came round to sort of May time, I was thinking about you know the mackerel coming in and stuff like that, and uh, I just just really missed it. It's the shipping forecast that does it for me. Yeah, and a six o'clock shipping forecast, and the one last thing at night. It's like Do you know, I still funny enough, I still. Uh, I used to listen to that right in the middle of Gloucestershire. Yeah. Nowhere near the bloody yeah, sea. Yeah, me too. I used yeah. to think, oh, uh, wind's changing down the uh, it's a, Portland. It's a, yeah, so, I always used to listen out for Lundy. What the hell's happening in Lundy? Uh, think of the guys out at sea, really. Yeah. <laughs> On the second half of my journey, I'm heading south and finishing the lyrics for the song. But now it's one more chorus and we're up the pub. Heave away, 